Hi, this is Paul Stolt from iPhone Dev TV, and now we're going to talk about loops. We use loops to repeat different actions and to redo things and to do things multiple times. So let's uh, get an introduction to this. There's going to be some different types of loops that we're going to talk about. We have the while loop, the for loop, and then we have two commands that help us work with loops. We have break and continue. Now there's another loop. There's the do while loop, but I never use it, so I don't think it's really important for you to uh, learn it right now, and it's pretty much the same thing as the while loop, just slightly different. So why do we use loops? We use them in applications where we're doing data processing. So if you're downloading photos from Facebook for your iPhone app, or you're uh, doing some kind of image processing, say you want to change the colors in an image and use some custom algorithm that you've developed, or maybe you're playing a video game and creating one and you need to check certain conditions. So you need to check every, maybe every second, maybe every millisecond, did the player win the game or not? Did they cross the finish line or not? And so you use loops to keep checking certain conditions. We did a, a countdown example in the functions, the advanced functions video, and we did the T minus five seconds, four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, one second. Now we could have done the same thing with a loop and we could have written it a little bit different rather than doing the recursive function calls. Um, so we're gonna sort of show you how to do that. All right, so let's look at how that might look with a while loop. We're gonna have, um, the following text. And so anything with the forward slash or the slash asterisk is going to be a comment. And the general structure is while parentheses and then some kind of condition and parentheses open curly brace and then you do everything inside and then you close it. And so with a while loop, we have to do some setup before we actually get into the loop. And then we have to think about what our end condition is going to be. So we want to keep repeating until we reach some kind of end condition, much like we did with the recursive function, we had that base case that stopped. Then we need to do any work inside of the curly braces and we need a conditional step, something that's going to get us to our end condition. So let's look at the code for the countdown timer. We're going to create a variable called seconds and we're going to initialize it to five. This is going to be the, the value that we're going to be checking against to make sure that we keep going. Next, our condition is while seconds is greater than zero. So is five greater than zero? Yes. So if it's yes, then we're going to go into our curly brace brackets and we're going to execute any of the code in that area. So we have an NS log, we print out T minus X number of seconds. And then we have our conditional step and we say seconds minus minus. So this is using the shorthand notation for uh, doing seconds is equal to seconds minus one. Next, we'll jump back up to the top. We'll check the condition is four greater than zero. And the answer is yes. So we'll run this code again and we'll keep repeating until we get down to one second. And then we'll print out T minus one seconds. And we'll see seconds minus minus is going to give us zero. And is zero greater than zero? The answer is no. So it's going to jump to the very end of that curly brace at the bottom. And then it's going to step over to the next line and print out take off. So the flow is a little bit different than we saw with the recursive functions. Um, but this is how we can repeat certain actions. This is how we can process all the pixels in an image or all of the data that you download from a Facebook a uh, user account when you're trying to process information maybe about events or the photos that they've taken or the places that they've been and things like that. The next loop that we have to look at is the for loop. Now this one's written a little bit different and I generally use a for loop because it sort of keeps everything together so that it's all sort of in one line. And the way I've written it is three lines for the, the for loop sort of initial setup, but this is just to show you what goes inside. So we've got our initial setup, then we have a semicolon, and then we have our condition, then we have another semicolon, and then we have our conditional step. And then inside the curly braces after the uh, four parentheses and parentheses, 
we do any of the work that we want to do in the loop. And so this is anything that's going to repeat and it's going to keep on repeating as long as our condition is true. When our condition is false, then it's going to stop repeating. So if we look at that same code written as a for loop, this is what it's going to look like. We create our variable up top, int seconds. Inside the for loop, we initialize it to its starting value. So we say seconds is equal to five. Now this only gets executed one time. So it's very similar to saying int seconds is equal to five, like we did with the while loop. Next is our conditional, our condition statement. Next is our condition. While seconds is greater than zero, we're going to repeat this. And so this is going to be checked every time we're about to start any of the code within the curly braces. So now we can jump down into the curly braces and say, okay, ns log t minus and then x number of seconds. And so we can print that out. So we'll print out five seconds. And now what we do is we go to the end of the curly brace and then we do our conditional step. And so it's going to say seconds minus minus. And what that's going to do is going to turn five into four. The next thing we do is we check the condition. So we're doing that condition step in the middle and we say four is greater than zero. So we're going to repeat any of the code in the block. And then when that's done, we're going to do seconds minus minus and we'll get three. And we keep on repeating this until the equation in the middle or the expression in the middle is not true. So when zero is greater than zero is evaluated, that's going to be false. And so it's going to stop and then it's just going to print take off because it's finished running all the code in the block for the loop. All right, another one I want to point out is break. So sometimes we don't want to keep on looping. Sometimes we know that we have to stop. And if we're doing a, a countdown timer, let's say we detect an engine failure. Well, if there's an engine failure, we want to stop the countdown and we want to abort the mission. And so we're going to stop the countdown. And what this does is it will jump out of the countdown loop and will stop counting down. And you could have other logic to prevent the actual takeoff of your rocket ship. So that's what break is. And you'll see this in, in code. And it just means stop executing and jump to the end of the block, essentially. So we'll jump to that last curly brace uh, below the for statement. And the last one is the continue statement. Sometimes when we're playing a video game, you might have a condition where you want to skip something. In the case of Uno, if the skip card is played, then you skip the, the current person and you go to the next person. So what this is going to do is if that skip card was played, we'll jump to the next person, we'll tell it to continue, and when it sees continue, it's going to jump all the way to the very bottom of the current while loop, which would be that very bottom brace on the bottom of the page, and then it starts over again. And so it's the next person's turn, they get to play a card, and then they call the next person so that we can keep on switching whose turn it is. So that's where the continue statement can be useful because of a certain condition where you know whatever's currently executing in this block needs to be skipped and we have to go to the next element. And you could get this type of thing with data you get from Facebook. So if you're trying to write an application that was printing out all of the friends that you have on Facebook and you want to omit maybe friends that you met in high school or friends that you met at a certain job, you could use something like continue to skip that type of data and only uh, track or display information that's sort of meaningful to whatever your application is supposed to do with that Facebook data. Okay, so we've talked about loops a little bit. We have the while loop and we have the for loop. They're just two different ways of repeating a block of code. And then we talked about break, which is for stopping a loop and continue, which is for skipping uh, iteration in the loop. So it will skip over something. Now let's jump over to Xcode and play around with these loops.